Hello and welcome to another episode of Dumb Down Tech. Today we're going to bring you a review and a benchmark score for an APU processor, the Ryzen 5 3400G. Recently, for the last couple of weeks, I've been under the weather, so not feeling too fantastic. And I've been at home and bored and trying to think of some things to do. So I thought my next project at home will be my new home server to upgrade my current one. Uh, for that, I wanted to go for an APU, so I don't need to use a graphics card because I want to keep it as low power consumption as possible. So I bought that processor and while sat at home after I had it, I was like, maybe I can do some testing with this. I've got nothing else to do, so let's do some benchmarks on it and see if it can run games. I tried everything at 1080p because nobody wants to use 720p anymore, thankfully. Um, so what I did was I run through five games and I also run a heaven benchmark with it just to see if it can still compete today in 2024. And did the testing, was quite happy with some of the results actually, but I was then still bored. So I had a GTX 960 2GB laying around, my old go-to safety measure if I have an issue, that's my troubleshooting card. And I also still have a GTX 1080, which is quite still relatively well priced. It's about 100 and 10 to 130 pounds mark depending on how good you are at finding deals and i thought somebody who's buying a relatively cheap apu would also then want a relatively cheap graphics card so i thought i'd do the testing with all three of them compile a little graph and a little video for us to have a little look at and we'll go from there so if you come back in a couple of minutes if you're still with us please be still with us we'll go through the review afterwards and we'll go through our afterthoughts see you in a minute Yeah. 
town From London to Taiwan I've been all around the globe Trying to protect your soul So welcome back after watching the little clips you've just seen of the videos side by side of how good or really not good that the videos could look. Uh, we've got some results. My aim was for the Vega 11 to have it all running as close to 30 FPS as possible. I know most people say anything under 60 is uh, disgusting, but I'm from the old school of playing the old PlayStation 1 games and X, original Xbox games and stuff like that, where 30 frames per second was what the standard was. So to me, in my eyes, 30 is cool. Everything else is just lovelier. So you've seen the results. So what I did different was um, FSR was hardly used as much as possible. I wanted to try and be raw grunt power. Um, but with F124, with the balanced preset for FSR, uh, it improved by 6. It went up to 39 over the standard without the preset for uh, FSR uh, and Cyberpunk also massively shot up that was the only one that really needed to have that improvement by using the FSR because it went from the 17 FPS all the way up to 34 using the standard low preset with the ultra performance that's why it looks absolutely horrible but if you want to play a game you're suffering if somebody really desperately wants to play something with no money you'll take the consequences for it um, the GTX 960 the FSR confused me on this. While it's technically supported, supposedly, I saw hardly any difference using the FSR on the 960 or the 1080. Um, with F124, we did raise up 5 by using FSR medium balanced to 18. Um, and Cyberpunk, F124 just wasn't happy on the 960 at all anyway. Uh, Cyberpunk dropped 
to 21. So it was a drop of 13 using FSR. So the GTX 960 clearly isn't happy with FSR. The GTX 1080, though, um, it made no difference on Formula 1 24. Uh, it was 89 before and 89 after. So, yeah. Uh, Cyberpunk Watch was using um, the low ultra performance preset. Uh, it gained 3 FPS. So, it's nice, but it's no. Um, but then I wanted to try something else out as well for the GTX 1080. It's obviously a lot better than I was trying to match the 1080 with the same as the Vega 11 and the 960 to make it all fair comparison. But the GTX 1080 can do a lot more than that. So I spent about an hour or so going through all the games and running them and running them and changing the settings to get everything as close to 60 or better. So for F124, the higher preset, it got 60 FPS using no FSR. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the highest preset, got 67 FPS, no FSR. Cyberpunk was the only one that did need to use the FSR, which I managed to run it at Ultra with FSR quality, and it got 57 FPS, which I was quite impressed with. Uh, GTA 5, the very high preset, managed 148. I don't think anyone's worried about using FSR on that. And Far Cry 5 Ultra Preset also managed 87. So, i say Cyberpunk being the newest game out of that lot shows you where we are now with the older generation of cards like GTX and further away. Um, you are going to need to start hoping for FSR and... AMD to carry on improving that and making it available as they have done to everybody to use. Otherwise, you are looking at realistically going towards at least the 20 series to be able to get the raw performance out of the newer games. But if all you're here for is older titles to just have a bit of fun and relive a bit of nostalgia and stuff, there's nothing wrong with a GTX 1080. You could probably even go 1070 or something like that for them sort of levels. Whatever the best deal you can find out, to be honest, is... It's difficult buying in the used market because you've just got to hunt and wait for the right deal and not just jump out and splash the cash just because you think that's the right thing to do. But hopefully we'll be bringing you some more videos soon. Like I say, we've got the server that I've set as my new project. You've probably already seen the case in a video before. It's not a surprise, but I'm excited for it. So we'll hopefully have that video up for you soon. So anyway, we'll see you in the next one. So please like and subscribe and we'll see you soon.